Hi everyone, in this video I'll be building a gaming PC based on AMD technologies. This video will be divided into four parts. The first part is I'm gonna show you what are the components I chose and why I chose these components. The second part will be how I will be assembling everything on the motherboard. And the third part is how I'll be installing the motherboard and the power supply into the case and how I will be connecting everything. And the fourth part is I'm gonna do a small benchmark test to see the PC speed and to see if the PC is working correctly. Also in this video, I'm gonna show you a small tweak in case your case has a USB-C port like my case here and the motherboard that I got doesn't have a USB-C header. So I'm gonna show you how to work around this so that to enable the USB-C port on your case. So let's start first with the components I chose. The first decision I took is that I will go with AMD or Intel and I chose AMD because it's a better value in my opinion. If you have another opinion, I welcome your opinions in the comment section below. So please don't hesitate to give me your opinions and why you chose this technology and the other. So when I chose the technology of AMD, first I chose the CPU. So I chose the AMD Ryzen 7 5700G. So I chose the CPU because it's versatile and it has an integrated GPU. I won't be using this integrated GPU in my build, but this is good to know in case I want to change this CPU to put it in another case or maybe to sell it afterwards. And I also chose the Ryzen 7 because it has 8 cores and 16 threads. And frankly, I found it at a very good price on Amazon. By the way, I'm going to leave a link in the description for all the components that you see in front of you. So this is AMD Ryzen 7 CPU that I got, the 5700G. And it has also in the box the AMD Wraith CPU cooler, which is very good. Also, for the motherboard, I went with the Asus Prime B550+. Plus. So this is the motherboard I chose. I chose this motherboard because it has many inputs. So after the motherboard, I chose as RAM, these GameX D10 RAM. So these are 32 gigabytes RAM, 16 plus 16, 3200 megahertz DDR4. And as a main drive, I chose this TimeTech 2 terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD drive. And as a secondary storage, I chose this 860 EVO from Samsung. So this is an SSD, also a SATA SSD. And for the GPU, I chose this RX 6600 XT from Sapphire. So this is the Sapphire Plus. And in my opinion, the 6600 XT has the best value amongst the GPUs these days. And for the PSU, I chose this Corsair TX 650M. This is a semi-modular PSU. It is more than sufficient for my build. And for the case, I chose this NZXT H510 flow case. It has a tempered glass here and it also has on the top USB-A3 and USB-C and a headset jack and it has two fans on the inside. So now that you saw the components, I'm gonna start by installing everything that goes on the motherboard before you put it in the case. So this here is a motherboard. What I can install before putting it in the case is the CPU and the CPU cooler, the RAM and the M2 drive. I'm gonna install it here. So let's start first by installing the CPU. So there is a lever here, push it down and then push it out and then bring it towards you like this. Do not touch the pins of the CPU, just touch it from the sides. And notice here on the CPU, there's a small triangle. So I need to align this triangle with the triangle that is here. You need to rest it on the socket without pushing it. Let gravity do its work. Make sure it is well installed. So now it is installed. Push down the lever. It becomes a little bit harder. And then now the CPU is installed. And now I'm gonna install the Wraith cooler. The thermal paste comes pre-applied to this cooler. So this here is a thermal paste. It is pre-applied, do not touch it. And I need to remove these brackets here. I'm using here a magnetized Phillips head screwdriver. It's better to use a magnetized screwdriver so that it will hold the screws when you remove them. Do not discard these brackets. Maybe you'll need them in the future. 
So now let's install the CPU cooler. So this is it. Make sure when you rest it on the CPU, do not move it anymore so that the thermal paste will have maximum contact with the CPU. Just align the screws and always tighten the CPU cooler or any other thing diagonally. So don't tighten it too much. One thing I forgot to tell you is that when you remove these brackets, you have the back plate here that will fall in case you didn't put it flat on a surface like this. For me, it didn't fall, of course, because I put the motherboard flat. So this is good to know. So if you put it like, for instance, on its side, it will fall. Just be careful for this. As soon as the screw stops turning, just stop. And now let's connect the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header. Now I'm going to install the memory. So if you see the memory here, you have four banks. And if you're only installing two DIMMs, as I'm doing here, so I'm installing only two DIMMs, 16 gigabytes times two, the motherboard manual says to use A2 and B2. So they are gray. So I'm going to be using the gray ones. So they have a key here. Align the key with here, the other key, and open the bracket here. And then just put it on the left first and then push it from here and it will snap in place. So let me install the other one now. And this is the memory installed. Now I'm going to install the M2 drive and I'm going to install the M2 drive here because this M2 slot here shares its bandwidth with the SATA connectors. So it shares its bandwidth with these SATA connectors. And because I have only one M2 drive for now, I'm going to install it in this one. To install this M.2 drive, you have two screws that come with the motherboard. So you need to install first this thumb screw with your hand on the form factor that you have for your drive. So for me, it is 2280. So I'm going to put it in the 2280 here slot and then tighten it by hand and then insert the drive like this here. So it has a key, as I said, and then push it down and it goes directly in the slot. And now I'm going to put this small screw with the magnetic screwdriver. Do not over tighten it just a little bit so that it goes in. So now the drive is installed. Now that we assembled everything on the motherboard, the next step is to install the motherboard in the case. This is the NZXT H510 Flow, which is a very good case. So it has tempered glass here. It has a thumb screw. Just undo it like this. And then the tempered glass should be easily removed here. Be careful not to break it. There are some accessories that are in this case that I need to get. So I'm going to turn the case and also on the other side of the case. You have thumb screws, you need to undo them and also remove this. And you see here, this is the box of the accessories of the NZXT. You have connectors, zip ties, and most importantly, you have the manual. The motherboard has this IO shield. So first you need to install the IO shield in the case. And the IO shield goes here and notice here, it has these bumps, so these bumps will snap in place. Here you go. And now we need to install the motherboard. And notice here in the middle, you have a raised screw here. So you need to put the motherboard like this and slide it in. And then here, it should go in the middle and the screw here, so it went in. So it's not well aligned in the I.O. shield, as you see here. I need to align it. You need to be patient and careful to do this. So look here, it is not aligned at all. So now it is aligned. So now it is good like this. I need to tighten it now in the case. And to do this, you need the screws that come with the case. So I need eight screws. So the screws for the motherboard are these screws here, type B, screw 632 times five. So here they are. So these are for the motherboard and also they are for the hard drive. Always install diagonally.
So this is a motherboard installed. This here is a hard drive cage for the 3.5 inch hard drives. So this goes like this, but for me to be able to install it, I'm gonna remove the cage first. So I'm gonna put the case upside down and these are the screws to remove the cage. So this is the cage and the hard drive should go like this. So now we need to tighten the hard drive. So now I'm reinstalling the hard drive cage in its place. So this here is the hard drive installed. So this is where I'm gonna install my SSDs. You need to remove the bracket. And you need to use the C screws. SSD should go like this. And it screws in like this here. So you notice that I slide the SSD a little bit so that the connectors here are apparent. So the installation will be easier. I'm gonna install it in place now. Here are both SSDs installed. The next step is to install the power supply. This here is a Corsair TX650M power supply. It's a semi-modular power supply. So this is here for the motherboard and the CPU. They are already connected. This is the motherboard. 24 pin connector and this here is the CPU connector and I've added also the GPU connector so this is a PCIe connector here so this is 8 pin and 6 pin and also I've added the SATA connector so because I have three hard drives so I'm gonna install another SATA connector here always install the cables on the power supply before you install the power supply in the PC this is easier so this is the SATA here connector I'm gonna add. So now everything is installed. Let's install the power supply. It should be installed with the fan down in the case. So here's the power supply installed now. Now it is turned off. Of course, don't forget to turn it on when you wanna test your PC. The first two cables I'll be connecting is the 24 pin cable for the motherboard and the 8-pin cable also for the motherboard. For the 24-pin cable, you should route it from here. And I'm gonna be tidying it up, everything at the end. So just slide it here. And for the 8-pin connector, it should route from here. So from the top, because it is on the top on the motherboard. So just take it here. And then let's turn the case. So let me first start by connecting the 24 pin cable. So it has a key and the key should go here. So it is like this and it just clicks in place. And for the 8 pin connector, it also has a key. So it is here. So it should go like this here. Let me connect now the SATA cables. This is the first cable. And this is the second one. So this is the SATA power. I didn't yet connect the SATA data. So these are the SATA connectors and I need to connect the hard drives to these SATA connectors. I have two cables already provided with the motherboard and I provided another cable from me. And this is two. So these are the SATA cables connected here. And if you look here, I connected them also to the hard drives. One here, one here, and one on the hard drive here. So this is the VGA power. I'm gonna route it from here like this. So it should go like this. And then I can install it in the GPU. And now let me install all the fans and all the headers. So I'm gonna show you how I will be installing everything. I'm gonna start by installing the fans. So these are the fan headers. You have one here, you have one here, and you have one here. I connected one, this one I connected it here, and this is here the front one. I'm gonna be connecting it here. So it is connected. Let me remove this so that I can connect everything. And remember I told you at the beginning that if you have a USB-C connector on the case but you don't have a USB-C header on the motherboard, I'm gonna show you how to work around this. And this is how I'm gonna do it. So I purchased this. This here is a device that converts USB to USB-C. So USB-A to USB-C. So this is USB-C connector. 
and this is how I will be connecting it so it will go here and connect it like this and then connect it here so now it is connected so this is the audio you see it says HD audio it has a closed pin and on the motherboard there's also a closed pin so you cannot put it wrong so here it is connected let me show you now how I will be connecting the front panel connector I'm gonna zoom in to connect it to the board you have this adapter that came with the case you see here it has many connectors and this here goes into the front connector here and to connect this adapter here notice here that there is no hole for the pin so you should make sure that this will be connected like this so now it is connected and now you need to connect these to the motherboard first I'm gonna start with the HDD LED this one goes on the bottom two pins so see how it is connected now then you have your LED plus and LED minus and the LED plus goes into the top left one this is only one pin the LED minus goes into the top second one and the power switch goes into the last one and you notice I still have two connections and this is for the USB-A port that is on the top of the case because I took this one for the USB-C so what I have is that I have this USB expansion card I'm gonna put it in the PCIe connector here so this way I'll have more USB-A ports and one USB-C and I'll be able also to connect here this cable so I'll have USB-A also on the front like this if I connect it and it needs power in case you want to connect like hard drives or power hungry devices on it so let me install it now so this goes like here so now I have USB-A working on the top of the PC here and I still need to install the GPU this is the RX 6600 XT should go here like this and it will take two openings so it went into place and let's tighten it and this is the power for it it is installed so now everything is installed everything is connected I'm gonna keep it open to test everything and then I'm gonna tidy up the cables so what I've done now is that I connected only the essentials to test the PC first I need to turn on the power supply so let me start it so this is it working here and now it's telling me to go to the setup so I pressed F1 to go to the setup and let's see here so everything is recognized even the Windows Boot Manager because here I transferred the drive from another system so now I am arranging the cables the case has like conducts on the back of it so make sure to put the cables in a way they don't get pinched after the cables are arranged let me put back the side panel on the PC and here's a tempered glass also and let me remove the protection now from the tempered glass let's go now and perform the user benchmark test to see if the PC is working correctly so here's the user benchmark test I performed on this PC and as you notice the PC is working great so it is categorized as a UFO meaning that this is the highest level and user benchmark and all the components are really working great and they are outputting very good results by the way I have Amazon affiliate links for all the components that I used in this build the links are in the description if you make a purchase using these links I will gain a small percentage at no cost to you and this will help my channel greatly and this will enable me to always make videos like this one I hope that this video will help you in building a PC if you like this video please share it subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up I would really appreciate it and also this will help the channel greatly I'm Eloy until next time